We have secured the Big Ten Championship trophy right behind us. We got you fresh off a of dunking. You you have been through that dunking before. Well, I tell you what, it, it felt good. And even though I told them, let's wait until we play one more, they, they wouldn't hear it. But uh, it was a special locker room with Jim Delaney, the commissioner of the Big Ten, uh, giving us that trophy. And, and uh, the folks from the Fiesta Bowl officially inviting us to the Fiesta Bowl. And just to see you know, how proud the kids were of each other and how much they care about each other, it was a special moment. One championship down, one to go. It's nice to have one in the fold. Well, there's no question about it. And, and the next one will be just as tough or tougher than this one was because the Big Ten, I thought, was going to be strong this year. I thought everyone would be better than they were, and I think they were. Uh, you know, we didn't have a chance to play Iowa. Iowa didn't have a chance to play us. Uh, unusual, 2-8, no teams in the Big Ten, but uh, I think the Big Ten will have great representation in the bowls. Speaking of bowls, the horseshoe was tipped on its ear. Another record crowd at the stadium for senior day, and it's always emotional, and you throw in Michigan with it as well as the seniors. And I'll tell you what, those kids have been working hard. They've been through a lot. They've been through a lot of transition, and you know, they're just positive young men and great leaders, and we've asked a lot of them, and they've stepped up and done a great job. Mike Doss, no question, one of them. There's a great one there. You just saw Kirk Loudermilk, who uh, was our honorary captain, was just pictured there, and yet no question, Mike Doss was right there on the hit, and he leads by hitting, he leads by example, he leads in the locker room. All the big ones step forward for the big game here, Coach. Offensively for Michigan, getting stuffed on what is a reverse here early in the game. You know, they had two of the reverses that they lost the handle on the ball. We didn't come up with any of them, but they were, they were good minus yard plays for us. And Michigan came out and really worked hard at their run game, but we just kept coming after them, and it, uh, it was a hard-hitting football game. Mike Doss, Darren Scott in on the hit there. Adam Finley finds a 36-yard field goal straight through the uprights, and it's a 3 to nothing lead, Michigan on top. Now, historically, the team that scores first has won more games in this series, so the best way to answer that is on your next drive here. Well, you know, it really was a good drive. There's a second down play, a little screen play to uh, Maurice Perrette, and he made Marlon Jackson miss there and went down the sideline. He kind of ignited us a little bit, you know, making a play, making someone miss, and and uh, we went to work from there. I think the fans just seeing him in the game also. Well, they got excited. And here's Michael Jenkins, and I'll tell you a big play in the game, Ryan Hamby coming up with that fumble recovery. Uh, Michael got stripped there, and, and here we are throwing the football out there to Chris Gamble, and Chris uh, has played a lot of football here in the last month or so. I bet he needs a little rest. A lot of plays on both sides of the ball and on special teams. Maurice Claret in the backfield now. Uh, here you see just a little draw play up in there and he's breaking tackles and working hard with the football and uh, Maurice Claret loves to play the game. 28 yard pickup and the Buckeyes in business inside the 10. Michigan is historically an outstanding team uh, in the red zone goal line area and our offensive line did a good job of moving the ball down and Maurice got it in the end zone. Claret from two yards out in for the touchdown and another spark ignited as the Buckeyes take the lead seven to three at the end of the first quarter and you answer it back and uh, silence the other side for a minute. Well for a minute uh, they weren't going to stop playing for 60 minutes and, and we weren't either and they came back after a little bit and here again the ball was on the ground it kind of bounced up in his hands there on that reverse or fake reverse or whatever but uh, uh, there's a lot of hitting going on in that football field. Gamble doing it for a loss of two on the play. Perry once again hit immediately. Matt Wilhelm, Will Smith, Kenny Peterson. We've got some great performance on that defensive squad. And, and to Michigan's credit, they popped their field goals through. Coming into the game, they were like eight for 20. Right. And in the ball game, they were three for three. And But you, know, you need to step up in big games. You trade them touchdowns for field goals all day. Well, that's that right. Instance. That's right. You can win if the team never scores a touchdown on you. Here you see a good step up by Craig Frenzel, and he finds Mike Jenkins on the sideline. Pickup of 18 on the play, and another pickup of eight follows right after it. Nice catch there again by Mike Jenkins, and, and uh, we're moving the football down the field, changing the field position uh, part of the game, which is always huge. We punted them down deep, and uh, here again our defense is coming up and flying up after the run. Donnie Nicky, yep, after a gain of just one on the play, and the next play, Dustin Fox gets a pass defense. Great break up there. They were going to their tight end, and I'll tell you what, Dustin Fox is a good corner. There's no question. Came up and made the play there. Now John Navarre chased and brought down for a loss of six on this play. Tim Anderson is relentless. David Thompson, Will Smith. Those kids are playing hard. Darian Scott are getting after it. In the red zone at one point, but now they'll have to settle once again. 22-yard field goal from Adam Finley is good in a 9-7. Michigan retakes the lead. Well, you know, they were 
They were working hard at it. We were working hard. They kind of controlled the tempo of the first half with their ball possession. And, uh, you know, that's what they set out to do. And, uh, you know, our defense was a little disappointed uh, with themselves in that first half. But as you'll see, when they came out in the second half, there was no more points to be had. Well, three possessions for Michigan. They scored on all three. They haven't punted in the game to this point. But you have to gain a little bit of confidence defensively that all three were field goals. Right, that's right. When they can't get in your end zone, uh, it's frustrating for the offense, and it's, it builds a little confidence in the defense that, hey, pretty soon we're not even going to let them close enough to get a field goal, and that's kind of what happened in the second half. Two minutes to every one minute time of possession. That would change in the second half. We're back with highlights right after. Big Ten championship, the Big Ten finale with big time implications around the country. It comes down to 30 minutes of play. No fire and brimstone in the locker room. This is Michigan. They know what's yeah, up. That's right. You knew it would come down to that. It's just a matter of getting through that first half and then going to the real half. And you could tell our guys are getting They're, they're going to be ready to go. Third down conversions for Michigan have been through the roof so far in the game here. They were converting on everything. You just get a feeling a couple of stops would do it. And you got them early in the second half. Well, that's right. And we ended up kicking into the wind. Got them stopped. Got the football back. And, and again here, Maurice, he, he just does such a great job of patience running the football. And he's got a lot of confidence in the guys up in front of him. And, and uh, you know, he just, uh, he loves to step up. Seems to be a different look when he is in the backfield with them. And he does offer something different. Loss of four on this play as Michigan takes the ball back over. But B.J. Askew taken down in the backfield. I tell you, our guys do a good job of keeping an eye on the screen there. And because Michigan does a wonderful job running screens. And we ended up stopping them and getting the ball back again. And back in Maurice Claret's hands. Number 13 takes it for a pickup of 17. Wow. Good job blocking downfield there by Chris Gamble. Good job up front, Ben Hartsock and Ryan Hamby were at the point of attack. And here we are in a little shovel pass, and the shovel was covered. And uh, Craig did what you're supposed to do. And they took it up the sideline, and it's uh, a little bit close to a penalty there, but I guess not. Close out of bounds. Pickup of 11, and then Maurice Claret. Very next play, 10 right up the gut. You now we're coming after him, and our guys up front, I think, are getting a good confidence and playing hard and, and getting a handle on the situation. Michigan ball, Perry tackled one yard gain. Now that there's no doubt that the two teams are going to come in and try to bang at each other because that's what the Ohio State Michigan game is about and, and then come and try to convert on your passing game and good job there by Rob Reynolds playing the flat and, and putting them in a third down situation. No freshmen anymore out there, right? No. All, every, everybody's a sophomore at this point games, of the season. Yeah. yeah, there's some of them that are halfway to the junior year. Halfway <laughs> through it. Buckeyes have the ball back again. We go to fourth quarter action, complete to Brandon Schnitker. What is that? A fullback out of the backfield. Well, you know, I think he was throwing to Mike Jenkins, and Brandon reached his <laughs> hands up. At it. But uh, either way, we'll take the yards. Got us to fourth and one, and, and Craig Frenzel called his own number there. And uh, you know, the, the leadership that Craig gives our football team is extraordinary. He it, wouldn't settle for anything less than going for it. No. This play right here was one that uh, Maurice Claret told me Somewhere back in the second quarter, he said, you got to call that wheel. you got to call that. They can't cover me. They can't cover me. So uh, he was right. He says that everywhere. Well, he does. He's always open. He's not crying wolf. He's, he's coming through with it there. 26 yards complete and Maurice Hall on a play that we've seen now once this year. Oh, that's right. A little weak side option play. And Maurice has got great speed out there as a pitch back. And Craig had good mechanics and uh, jumped in the end zone. Three yards for the touchdown on a 14 to 9 lead now. And it's just hang on for dear life, and you got your defense on the field just the way you like it. Navarre is sacked. The fumble is recovered. I think it was Darian Scott that caused the fumble, and Will Smith that came up with it, and, and uh, that's huge. Unfortunately, we didn't burn off all the time on the clock. It would have been nice to, to uh, do that. We gave them a chance to have the ball, and, and to their credit, they played hard. They kept going. No one ever stops playing in the Ohio State Michigan game. Well, that's a fourth and ten, and they pick up eleven just to uh, make that point a little more clear. Here's a second and ten, and a pickup of fifteen to Bellamy. Uh, they did a good job of stepping up in there and throwing the ball, and giving themselves time to uh, to convert those, and um, it, it's inevitable. It seems like we always take it down to the final tick on the clock. First and ten, and need some yardage. Seventeen yards complete to Bellamy, and maybe the way this team is hung in in one touchdown games or less, it's fitting to have your D out there. Ooh, I'll tell you what, we have a lot of confidence in our defense, and great job by Will Allen there, and here he is holding on tight to that football, and that's all she wrote, and happy for those young people to, uh, they've worked hard, they've done whatever we've asked of them, and they've cared about each other, and, and trained hard, and studied hard, and uh, just a special bunch.
Has this team ever tried to be something it's not this season? Well, you know, they've been so busy working. I don't know if, if they spend time, you know, talking about that. They, they want to win. They want to succeed. They want to be the best they can be. They want to do it the right way. Uh, they want to be special. And, uh, you know, we have one more chance to see if we can do that. Can't be a national champion coming from one of your quotes until the group realizes that it's more important than just about them. And I think they, they get the idea. Well, I think they really do. And, and they care about their school. They care about their community. They care about how they represent college football. And, and uh, you know, we know we've got a lot of work to do. We're excited about being 13-0. and 0, But, um, you know, we've got to get ready for finals. We've got to get ready for a bowl and uh, see what we can do. You had the guys read a book regarding the national championship team of 1942. They've got that in their minds. 1969 has come and gone, uh, a horrible year, upset loss to Michigan, 93, 95, 96. You've exercised some demons here with this win with a huge game on the line. Well, I don't know about exercising anything, but uh, uh, our kids came out and played 60 minutes and uh, earned the right to go and play another one that has a lot of meaning, earned the right to you know, say the rest of their lives that you know, they were the co-champions of the Big Ten, and uh, that's awful special. Well, we've got one of your special players coming up next on Buckeye Football. A night of riots after the Buckeyes' victory over Michigan. Just good, clean fun. Look at this. Fires in zone, intercepted. Let's party, Columbus. We've all had this impulse, right? Your favorite team wins a shot at a title, so... You celebrate by overturning some stranger's car, bashing in others, and torching a few more. In all, destroying 20 vehicles, not to mention the window of a place these scholars really must hate, a bookstore, and igniting more than 100 fires around their beloved college town. It was a kick in the teeth to our residents. It was a black eye as to how we are viewed in the nation. But that's nothing compared with how police are viewing these rioters. After trying to subdue them with tear gas and wooden pellets called knee knockers, cops are now reviewing videotapes so they can add to the 48 arrests so far of, of what? What are we calling these people? Over-exuberant fans? Outside agitators? The behavior was criminal and unacceptable. And unfortunately, most of those responsible appear to be students. Well, anyway, they attend the school. Maybe not for long. The school president says any student arrested will be immediately suspended and anyone convicted will be expelled.